All right. Welcome back. Um, I'm trying out Streamlabs today. It's changed a lot since the last time I used it. It looks really modern now. Um, but yes, I'm calling today's video um, a heavy paint devlog because I feel like that's kind of what these tend to be is just looking at some features and doing a painting and chilling. So a lot of stuff has changed um, since we last spoke. Um, so let me just run through it real quick. I'm pretty happy with, with a lot of the changes. Let me show you. So first of all, we have a new transform tool. So this is mainly just for mobile because um, when you're on a mobile device, you you can't you know use a keyboard hotkeys. So we need an actual transform tool. So this is what it looks like. It just has a little doodad over here. You can move with that and zoom with with this one. So that's it. That's the transform tool. It was a pain in the ass, but now it works. And on the desktop, of course, you can always use uh, the hotkeys, which is period and and question mark. But and you'll also see like the little green dot is where the thing will center into. Um, and then aside from that, we're, there's also a fill poly tool, which is back from the old version, but the way it works is you can click to create this polygon shape. And you can also draw to make a curve. So this is nice. It's, it's similar to a lasso selection on Photoshop. Um, you, you press the F again to finish it. So whenever you start a fill poly, it's going to make this F turn red. And then you can click on it to finish the fill poly. All right, so that's that. A lot of people miss that tool from the uh, old version. Um, can you guys hear me, by the way? I hope. I think. Um, so next we've got undo performance has been greatly uh, improved to where it's like basically instant now on on uh, the layers version. So. Yeah, undo is instantaneous and uh, infinite as always. You can go back to the first stroke if you want. Um, I was fighting a problem with that w that has to do with like memory limits and screenshotting and all this boring stuff, but it's been figured out. Also, loading and undo rebuild. Okay, rebuilding layers in general has been really sped up by uh, a little trick I found out like last week. So I'm pretty excited about that. That means that loading in paintings is gonna go like way faster now and also rebuilding a layer. Like for example, if you move a layer, it has to rebuild because it's, you know, going off the frame or, you know, if we zoom in and zoom out, it has to rebuild. See how it's all pixelated now, but when I let go, it gets unpixelated. Well, fuck, I just flipped it inside out. How the fuck did I do that? Okay, let me try to um, hopefully get out of here and back. Please, God. Whew. Okay, that's. <laughs> I need to figure that out. I don't know how it just freaking flipped upside down. Um, oh, yeah, another thing pages has been updated a little bit. It's got a delete button now. So you can, you know, if we want to get rid of this page, just hit delete. Okay. Okay, it doesn't work on page one. Let me fucking go back here. Okay, let's say we're here on page two. I'm gonna say delete page two. And then it gets rid of it. Um, there's also a skip button now. so. Oh yeah, and then here we have the the um, animation is back from the old version. Um, this is something that a lot of you guys were asking for to uh, return. So you can uh, 
play back the animation and you can also click on skip to skip the whole thing and skip will load it by layers kind of so if I hit skip you can see it loads the three layers let me bring in a painting with more layers so you can see that effect better like if we get uh, San Fernando gas station let's open that up you can see it oh, it loads per layer it's it's uh, this is as fast as it can load basically but at least you get a cool little layer by layer animation there um, and then there's stats that will be soon I just put a button in there for the stats um, what else is new what else is new well I, I guess that's pretty much it oh one other pretty big thing is there was a little bit of a lag on the on the beginning of strokes for me for a long time that was just bothering the shit out of me and like you, it was really noticeable if you were doing like lots of little strokes it would kind of hiccup on the beginning of the stroke but that's been fixed finally that that's been bugging me since the, the start of this whole rebuilding this whole thing so it and I'm noticing it even now just drawing this um, this drawing it feels a lot more responsive so if you it's it was almost imperceptible but it's definitely noticeable um, for for drawing especially so I'm, I'm pretty happy with this um, Anyway, and then from last time, th this is kind of a small thing from last time that, oh, what? What the hell? That's not good. Okay, that's definitely a bug. Huh, the textures come in weird if it's on a preloaded weird okay that's another bug to look up let me write that down fun times guys fun times uh, loaded layers alpha alpha broken okay so I want to try to paint this kid. It's, this is a Irish um, artist named uh, O'Connor, I guess, the most Irish possible name, and then also the most Irish possible colors. But I really like this. I like this uh, painting a lot. So let's give it a shot here. I did a little bit of a cheating, you know, like the Martha Stewart. I was drawing before the stream started because I figure it's pretty boring to just watch the, the drawing from the very beginning it's a lot of just you know trial and error tweaking oh another thing too a lot of people were saying that the zooming direction was backwards from Photoshop so like going left and right is now uh, going right is zoom in and going left is zoom out which I hope that's better for for everyone because I had it opposite before and people were like, it was breaking people's brains to do that. Um, so yeah, hopefully we're good now. Alpha bug and zoom flip. Wait, zoom flip? Oh yeah, yeah, the, the transforming flip thing. Thanks for writing that down. <laughs> Hi Toto. Doing good. Hope hope you are too. Hello Adam, thank you. Um So yeah, this this version is getting close, guys. I'm I think you know, the mobile versions are feeling like they're in sight. They are within grasp. I got also got pinch zoom and and two finger pan working on mobile. I spent the other day like 
an entire two days just trying to get um, pen pressure working on Android, but no luck yet. It's close though. I can. Um, it's detecting pen at least, so at least you know. It knows there's a pen there, which is a good sign. I just can't get the pressure to work yet. Um, but that's that's a little bit more involved. That's like kind of out of my comfort zone because it's dealing with um, the actual engine uh, in C++, which is a lot different from uh, the usual stuff I'm used to. So I'm kind of like learning as I go there and uh, figuring it out. I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, but I don't know. Maybe... Eh, I don't know. Does anyone here know C++? It's kind of annoying because it's not just C++ because um, Android and Godot Engine, which is what I'm using, it's it's converting Android, which is Java, into C++. And uh, that whole translation is like confusing as hell for me. I don't know what, how it works, but I'm trying to like look at the code that's already there and sort of reverse engineer it and figure out how to get it to do what I want it to do, but it's very, uh, it's very confusing. Um, uh, but aside from that, I'm still, you know, taking my business class. If you hear like last time I was telling everybody that I'm taking like a little small business class to try to learn how to you know take this project more seriously and it's been fun learning a lot and I think one of the ma big things I'm learning is that basically everyone I, I thought I was gonna go in there and everyone in the class was gonna be like super business experts and they were all gonna know what they're doing and stuff but really everybody is like just as confused as I am and we're all just floundering so that's, I mean, I guess it's helpful. I, I don't feel so, so alone. It's 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 sort of more more of a support group almost, because <laughs> everyone's like, oh my god, I don't know what my idea should be or, uh, what do I do? And everyone's like really afraid of failing. And so, I guess at least I have that going so far. Is like, I've already got this project going. Um, I've already been, you know, experimenting and playing with things and sort of jumped in the water at least, whereas a lot of, a lot of the people in class are, are like brand new. They're just coming up with their idea of what they want to do for business and everything. So it's pretty exciting. But the other cool thing about the class is like, it's meant to be. Um, business but for everyone you know so it's it's not very technical it's it's very practical which I like and um, I guess the philosophy is that everyone should start a can and should start a business is the idea which I I agree that a lot of people that at least people that I know I think should start businesses because they'll you know have more independence they'll be more self-reliant less stress I mean that's debatable because it can be stressful but I mean work is also stressful and the other myth too about business is that it's it's um, risky or unsafe and I totally disagree with that I think it's uh, more risky to to have a job honestly because with the job you have like no control over, you know, what if the company goes under? No control. What if somebody decides, what if your boss decides they don't like you or what if, I don't know, they're just, they're, it's totally out of, out of your control, the whole situation. So I, um, I definitely agree that biz business or even just like a side thing is really good to help people to have more control over their at least financial well-being, you know. The other th way to look at it too is like if you have a side thing going on that's making a little bit of money, 
then that means you're f more free to, let's say, um, maybe you can pass up on a job that you don't really want to do because at least you have some something else that can you know hold you over until the next job comes up. So maybe by by waiting, you you'll get a much better job that ends up being much better for you in the end. You know, so it's not like a one or the other thing. It's it's more like a flexibility thing and a and a a, a freedom thing. Because if you're you know if you're fully dependent on one thing, it's it it can lead to you know a lot of vulnerable stuff. You know, you're you're leaving yourself very vulnerable to being taken advantage of sometimes. You know. Not not that everyone not that that happens all the time, but it does happen. People get taken advantage of, so it's nice to just try to get ahead of that a little bit. Um, but anyway, yeah. Aside from that, it's it's fun to think of ideas of brainstorming with people and talking about what what they want to do and try to help each other come up with, um, you know, or even just being like, hey, that idea is, is bad, like, <laughs> we don't think that'll work, or, or here's another way that it might work, that, that could be better, and people are pretty um, helpful that way. Um, mm, 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 mm. but yeah every people in the class keep telling me that I should do like a heavy paint challenge or something um, like one of the monthly art challenge type things which uh, yeah, yeah basically everyone's been telling me I need to do that even people that aren't in the class just just friends and stuff and saying to do that and I need to eventually but yeah. um, it's it's kind of funny to listen to like how Silicon Valley people think too is, is sort of funny because it's almost like if you're not doing the whole venture capital like raise a million dollars thing then I guess then that's like then you're a failure if you're not doing that apparently which is weird to think about but luckily um, I guess coming from uh, outside of that whole world it, it still sounds kind of ridiculous to me <laughs> And, um, and apparently people sometimes do that fundraising stuff just just for like the status of it too um, even if it might not be good for them in the long run uh, but I don't know it's fun to just learn about something new and be a little fly on the wall with all these different type of people um, favorite idea from a classmate well one guy decided to buy the domain name um, Plantain Guy. So he's going to be the Plantain Guy now. He's he's going to like sell plantains to people online, which I think is a good idea. I like plantains. I would probably buy plantains. Um, do any of you, got, you guys like plantains or is that a weird... Because I feel like uh, some some of the supermarkets around here have plantains. But I guess, like, a lot of supermarkets still don't have plantains. So, in the meantime, that would be a great business. 
another guy bought the domain name uh, DIY Combinator, which is pretty funny. Y Combinator is like this startup uh, school thing. Um, and then what else did they do? Somebody's doing a space related video marketing agency like he worked at spacex and now he and he's a video like he does super pro really polished videos and he wants to specifically do videos for space companies which i think is an interesting idea but uh, but also like i didn't realize there's so many space are there that many space companies that you can just only do videos for space people that's it you know it seems very niche um, but yeah, people have all sorts of weird ideas. Um, one guy has an idea for a job board, but instead of a job board, it's a company board. Um, people have ideas for like, you know, I, I don't know. There, there's ideas for everything. I, it's, it's actually weird how there's a lot of people's idea is to help starting entrepreneurs make a business which is just odd because that's what they're trying to do too so they haven't you know what I mean they're like their business is a business to help themselves or somebody that's in their own position but I don't know how they're gonna do that if they're um, they haven't I guess made it yet uh, Um, even okay so the the key thing is, is is a problem it's the answer is no um, one reason is because app stores don't allow you to activate from outside sources like if you if you bring a key in from outside they will remove your and they catch you they'll remove your block your app from the app store because they they take like a 30 percent cut from everything um when you when you make a sale on on app stores so unfortunately i can't have one key that works for desktop and mobile now the second reason why they're separate is because it's a lot of work to do on all platforms um like i was just saying you know it takes a lot of time to get the pen pressure working on this platform and then I don't know there's lots of little annoying things for each platform so it's it's a separate thing for desktop and for mobile um, that being said the mobile one is a lot cheaper than the desktop one so hopefully that makes it less annoying but that's just how, how it is Um, but you know, honestly, I'm still figuring out all this pricing stuff. So I don't know. I I think that's fair. But if what do you guys think? Is that not fair to do that? I mean, there's a reason why there are no apps that work on mobile platforms and desktop. It's because it's a pain in the ass. <laughs> like. Do you know of, can you name any painting program that works on every single platform? Um, that being said, if there was a way to like have one key for everything, I feel like I would be a lot more likely to to do that. But just because the app stores don't allow it, I it's like technically impossible to do it in a way that's like in a way that's not me like manually making a coupon every single time somebody wants to do it, which is kind of yeah.
Um, Flow Racine. Google Draw? Oh, I've never heard of that one. Uh oh. I gotta check that out. So it's on mobile, Windows, Mac, and Linux? And iOS and Android? Alright, I'm gonna put in some hair here. Yeah, um, yeah, the whole pricing thing is tricky. Uh, a lot of people in class have been telling me that I should do like a, su a subscription thing instead, but I don't feel really comfortable doing that, especially with, uh, you know, like the Photoshop thing where they started doing subscription and then everyone's like, oh my God, it's, it's so annoying. and. I felt the same way too, like I had the Photoshop subscription for a little while and it was just, I didn't like it. So yeah, for some reason with art programs, like the subscription feels awkward, right? What do you guys think? I mean, if you think about it, it makes sense because you're you're having to update the thing constantly and it's like, it's not like you just make it one time and it's done and the value's gone, but um, I guess the, I the idea with subscription stuff is it's supposed to be something that gives you like continuous value, which I mean, for Netflix and um, those kind of things, it's it's more obvious because like you get a new TV show every once in a while. Maybe for this kind of drawing app, it it doesn't really look like you're getting more value over time because it's not tra changing so drastically. But there are updates happening constantly, so. But yeah, I don't I don't feel comfortable doing it yet. Mm. It's yeah, it's all tricky. I was just talking to someone yesterday that he he has an app that um it 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 I guess it scalps supreme deals like you know the brand Sup the clothing brand supreme you know they sell out really quickly whenever they release some new item so his app will just buy the thing from supreme like instantly with a bot for the the app user so i don't know maybe scalpers use this thing or maybe super fans that really want to have the thing um but yeah that's all that's all it does it just it just it's a, a bot that, that buys stuff for you and he, he's charging like $60 a year subscription for that and there's there's like 500 people using it so but that's different I think also with the subscri subscription stuff it's different if the thing that you're the, the, the app actually helps you make money then it's much easier to justify spending you know so such amount for a subscription because you're going to make back that money right away, right? Same thing for Gumroad or whatever, um, you know, or some kind of like learning platform where you're learning stuff that that's valuable. So you want to, you feel okay paying for it. Um, but then again, I guess if you're using a program to make money, you know, like you're using it for work, then, then also that, I don't know. It's a pain to think about it.
CSP is on most of those except Linux. So how does CSP do pricing? Is it like one price for every platform? Maybe I should just do whatever they do if they figured it out. this weird stripey shit that this guy does. That's so cool. So Irish maximum Irishness. I guess I shouldn't be listening to Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. This is, we need some more. Something more Irish. It's one time on WinOS and macOS, on iOS and Android, it's free. Oh, really? That's an interest, interesting way to do it. Is it free, like full version is free on iOS and Android? I mean, I guess that's a way to get around the whole app store annoyance. Because sometimes they'll have like free and then, you know, you get extra features with an um, uh, in-app purchase or something like that. Okay. Yeah, some there some people were also s recommending that I should try to find like a partner or somebody just to handle all the business stuff cuz I don't really uh know what I'm doing on this side of stuff which might be good. But I have I also have like, you know, I don't know why I have this like do it yourself thing where I kind of always want to just do the thing myself. may not be a great thing I just need to let go Yeah, so subscription for studios is how I have it set up right now. Um, but there's not really any studios. The, the only one so far is Weta, which is pretty cool. Um, they just like emailed me out of the blue one day and were like, hey, let, let, we want to use Heavy Paint. I was like, sweet, cool. So I set up the subscription thing for them. But haven't... Um, 
figured it out otherwise. I mean, it's cool to be free, but also um, if I'm going to work on this thing full time like I am now, I if I want to do it for longer, I have to make some money. Otherwise, I, I can't financially do it. So that's why it costs money <laughs> so I can like live um, and continue, you know, improving it, which I really hope I can do because I really enjoy working on this thing. It's my, it's been my favorite project so far in my life. The painting of a boy looking through window blinds. That's that is what it looks like. Yeah, to Toto, that's how I have it set up now. It's like five dollars for the mobile version. Oh, I forgot to turn the flashback on. Oops. I was um, listening to T-Pain's Twitch <laughs> stream the other day and he's complaining about all the same stuff like oh the the, the record label screwed me over or business partner screwed me over and blah 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 and like he, he it's just funny how like even T-Pain has the same stupid uh shit happening as everybody else <laughs> T-Pain's pain is kind of crazy Man, how are we gonna do these little stripes? There's, it's all over the place. I guess I could just draw them and then, uh, <laughs> use them as a mask. I also found the the founder of Twitch uh, has a YouTube channel and he was talking about how he like sold Twitch to Amazon and all this crazy stuff. 
But the video only has like a couple thousand views and his his uh, channel is only like 9,000 subscribers. Which is pretty crazy to think, right? Like the creator of Twitch. He just has a little mom and pop shop channel <laughs> on YouTube. Kind of cool. I, I, I hope that more people that, you know, I guess have done this kind of stuff will will share their uh, journey you know so freely and online and like you don't have to sign up or anything you just go watch his YouTube channel and it's pretty awesome I guess if you're at that stage where you like sold a company for whatever ungodly amount then you don't really probably don't really care about money at all anymore um, like he was saying that his and in another one of his videos he's like yeah I didn't get any happier when I sold twitch and I had all this money like doesn't really um, change anything so then I guess at that point you have to learn how to be happy like just from internal stuff and not not just you know always seeking happiness from outside Although you can definitely feel um, sad or, or angry from outside forces. Um, but I guess the money just makes it so you don't, <laughs> so those like kind of things won't break, bring you down anymore. Oh no. Oh, it's, that's not good. It's ruining the texture there. See that? Like the edges get get um completely washed out. Damn it. No, I thought I fixed that today. Cool it. Oh, what do you call this stencil? No. Uh. Okay. What if maybe maybe if we use a clip layer that'll work? No. What the fuck. Um, the channel. It's his. His name is Justin. Khan, like Justin K A N, and uh, Twitch actually used to be called Justin TV, and it was just him on with a camera strapped to his head, twenty four seven streaming. Like it was a real life Truman Show, and that's how they started Twitch. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, this dude has a YouTube channel <laughs> with only nine thousand subscribers, and <laughs> he just talks about selling Twitch to Amazon and whatever bullshit. It's kind of funny. Hello. Hey. Hi. Okay, I think this hair has these like red stripes in it or brown doo-doo stripes. 
really nice and subtle strips of butter. Doo -doo. Ah. It's kind of crazy to think about, like, this guy just decided to strap a camera to his head and stream it 24-7 at a time when, like, streaming was not even a thing. That's, that's like, going so... That's committing so hard to something. <laughs> so crazy. I mean, it sounds really dumb, right? It sounds incredibly dumb. But he was on to something, I guess. Like, <laughs> like there's a lot of people that... I mean, here I am streaming, saying how stupid it is. But whatever. <laughs> so unnatural. Especially, I, I don't feel, I feel, I would have never imagined myself doing this when I was younger. Because I hate, I hate talking, so it doesn't make any sense. Why am I doing this? Somehow it's, it's fun. <laughs> I don't know why it... I think it's fun because you guys... I. I you guys are, are trapped. You have to listen to me talk. <laughs> it's the only place I can... I can, uh... Trap people to listen to me. No, it's probably... Probably most people have me on mute and they're just... Watching. Maybe. I don't know. Ah... make this more Irish maximum maximum Irishness let's go oh what movie is this I think I recognize this It's definitely not Crouching Tiger. <laughs> oh. 
Man, this painting is crazy. How do you even get this idea? Oh, that's sweet. Money is important, but for getting space and time, drawing a trash can in HP is my definition of happiness. Yeah, I I think that is what people It's it's yeah, being in that like flow where you you're not, you're not even you're just in the zone. That that is kind of like That's that's great. I kind of I, I like that about streaming too is this is the one time where I I really really can't you know I have to be on I have to be in the moment here can't be like on Instagram or something wasting time and just trying to do one thing that's it it's getting harder and harder to do that with more and more distractions but This is American uh, what was it called? It's not American Pie, it's the Kevin Spacey one. So bad with names. American Beauty, that's what it was. Jeez, my brain shuts off. American Pie is a different movie. Okay, let's see this. Get some rake back in here. Oh yeah, also changed the rake recently. It's um, a lot thinner now, quite, kind of more similar to how it used to be in the old version. Because I think this this rake here was a little bit too thick. It's, the only problem is it's tough to see the texture here. I'm gonna change that. This one that comes around the nose is good, or I think a pretty important one because it gives that 
cross section. So I'll try to pay a little more attention to it. It kind of looks like a watermelon, yeah. <laughs> it does look. like hurting my eyes. Ooh. I'm gonna move to another layer on top of everything just for this final stuff. Might be easier than trying to switch layers every two seconds. There's like this uh, really dark, super saturated green all around the border that I'm, I'm liking.
Gotta put in these uh, lines over top of everything to uh, hide the fact that I've been using layers this whole time, you know. Just hide those edges, or not hide the edges, but mess up the edges so they're not so, you know, sharp and computery, I guess. The lip is something like that, dark red. Should probably not be zoomed in so far. Tends to end up bad. Let me switch back to this um, on top layer. Where is it? This one? Uh, this is not Van Gogh. This is a Irish painter. I forget the name, but it looks like it's O'Connor. So I just developed HP full time. Yes, I'm working on it full time now. This is my project been for the past year or so full time working on this
Did I screw up his mouth? I think I did. Uh oh. I'm getting into the Lord of the Rings now. Roderick O'Connor. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I, I really like this this stuff. It really hurts your eyes, but it's uh pretty cool, I think. Um, okay, guys. It, what would you want to see on the stream in the future? In particular, because so far I'm just kind of painting whatever, but you guys have any things that uh, you would rather see? Well, I know a lot of people probably want to see Blender, but... <laughs> I guess like uh, painting related stuff. Thank you. 
giant, it's got like maximum gradient. It's kind of like messier on the cheek, which I think is cool. Hmm. Yeah, Eric, yeah, he took Moto years back. Uh, yeah, so th that's how I met him. Yeah, he was he was uh, getting into 3D. I don't know if he's still still doing 3D stuff anymore, but. from uh, teaching 3D at Concept Design Academy because um, a lot of the teachers there will just sit in on classes you know because because if you um, you know you get to take uh, free classes if you're teaching so and I'll and I'll you know so a lot of the teachers would drop in and got to meet people that way or I would sit down in on other people's classes and Got to sit in on um, Jamie Jones's class, which was pretty awesome. And who else? James Paik was teaching. This was before they started uh, Brainstorm School. Him and John Park. And there was another school called Red Engine in downtown. I don't know if it's still there. But yeah, Red Engine was cool too. I need to make this green, the green strokes a little more dirty somehow. Muddy. Everything hand drawn. That's good. That's the kind of stuff that you guys. That's the the real hardcore stuff that you need to learn.
Look at the where the hair meets the forehead a little bit of a transition there. So instead of just this really sharp, ugly line, maybe just put a medium tone in between and maybe like to get that line maybe just I don't know does it what, what does it look like if we zoom in real close uh, this orange whatever this is is like the transition between the dark hair and the light so I need to find an orange like that it's it's similar to this orange but maybe a little bit lighter I don't know more neutral here let me try something like this although otherwise it's gonna look like he got his hair cut like one millisecond ago by and he was cut by diamonds or something you know so we want it to look a little more natural Okay, it's not perfect, but at least it doesn't look like he's wearing a helmet. Smudge action. This looks kind of good. God, I'm so lost without this uh, the flash can't tell what hell layer I'm on this looks weird why is it so dull Okay, something funny is happening with Smudge, I think. I'll just leave it alone. That sucks.
Hey, Chris. Leonardo, what is next? Update? Uh, now. I just updated, like, right before the stream. So, go to the link uh, in the description and you can try this version here. This is version 2036. Being every single stroke. But I really enjoy how this guy paints. 
very satisfying to work this way. You, like even the wall is really fun with all the colors jumping around. And it's, it all, f it feels like slow. This feels like a slow cooker kind of a painting where, you know, every single inch is a new stroke. Like, he could have described this without all the extra stripes everywhere, <laughs> but but that's what makes it cool, and, like, looks like he, you know, took the time and care to do it. So, I will try to also take the time and the care to do it, since I'm doing, since I'm studying this guy. Mike J says, I'm curious how did you come up with color jitter feature? Is there any other apps that have that? Yeah, basically every painting app has color jitter. It's just that you can't find it because it's like buried in the menus of the brush settings. So I didn't invent color jitter. The only thing I did was take that setting and put it in the front because I think it's a very useful thing that people would want to use all the time. Um, basically everything in heavy paint is existing things that every app probably has it's just that the priority is different like I put the color sliders on front because uh, I want you to be able to change colors really fast uh, versus you know some apps will hide the color behind the menu so it's just little priority things it, after heavy paint is optimized for painting priority wise But yeah, every app has color jitter pretty much. Every app has lots lots of cool stuff you probably don't even know about. You have to go digging for it. try to put all the cool stuff up front so you don't have to dig and hopefully you just discover this stuff on your own is color jitter coded like a random number yep there's a lot of randomness in heavy paint. The texture's random, the color's random. There's, uh, you can do positional jitter too. If you go in here and say, 
you know, scatter or size jitter. Scatter does like that, that's a random number. Size jitter, that's a random number. Rotation jitter. Basically anything with the word jitter in it is random. Oh, that's not bad. Randomness is nice for painting because it's like um, the only way that we can, or it's a way to sort of get a natural feeling with computers is having randomness. Some people have suggested to have a random tool selector or a random tool where like at each stroke that you do, it gives you another random, like a random texture and a random settings, <laughs> which would be kind of funny. I have to try to make that soon. I would use, I would try it, who knows? Hey Rafael, um, how are you? F I'm feeling fine. That's a weird question. Uh, I recently picked up a book about biology of seeing color luminance. 
Oh, cool. Biology of seeing. Is it an art book or, or more like a science book? What's your thoughts about feature creep? Like you start so simple and more features are wanted, but at what point do you think it'll be too far from the core? Yeah, it's, uh, it's tricky. It's tough. Um, I think it's still got the core. I've also got this uh, hardcore mode thing, which basically brings us back to the stone age with only you know a few basic tools. So there's that. So I think hardcore mode can always be for the hardcore people. And then regular would be for, you know, people that want layers and all that other fancy stuff. But it's still pretty different from uh, most programs. So I'm, I don't think I'm at the point where it's like blending in with uh, I think it's still pretty unique in a lot of ways so um, I feel okay with that as long as it's different enough that there's a reason for people to use it you know I guess like um, yeah it's funny how in, in the beginning a lot of people like just the simplicity that it like doesn't have a lot of stuff but I think to me it's a bit of an ego thing and a bit of a maybe a pride thing where I want to see if it's not just that like if because I think that it's good in other ways it's not only good just because it doesn't have that certain things it's good because it has certain things um so I, I guess I'm like testing out that theory by trying to make it a little bit more competitive with, uh, with uh, you know, feature-wise to see if it's, you know, maybe it's more than just the lack of features that, that makes it good. But um, I'm sure a lot of people will like probably not upgrade and like stick with the old version because they don't want change. But I'm uh, I'm really enjoying using this version so far. So I hope most people will will think it's better than the old one. got Philip Glass guys Philip Glass only has like one song that he does over and over and over again but it's a really good song so I'm not complaining
but yeah, I'm not. I'm very, very sensitive to the feature creep stuff, and I test a lot. So I test and see if does this make it better or does it make it worse. And there's a lot of things that I've put in that I've ended up taking out because I feel that it made it worse. So it's not like I'm just adding in things like everywhere and not caring about if it's gonna affect other things. I, everything is related and everything is like carefully considered. And, um, but it is a trade-off sometimes. Sometimes it's like, yeah, the, it's a, again a priority thing. Like it, it depends on what you feel is most important. And then you arrange all the other stuff around that. But I think the big priority things are still intact here, even in the layers version. This uh, kid doesn't look the same. He looks like his uh, cousin or something. I made the face too round. But it's okay. Close enough. Nobody will know. Except for you guys. This is like his younger brother maybe. My version is the younger one. Younger and rounder. Um, hey Raymond, what are some artists that influence your art? Well, this guy right now is uh, inspiring me. What's his name? Somebody posted his name. Uh, it's Roderick. O'Connor yeah so he's the artist of the day for me Roderick O'Connor but aside from this I like graphic style stuff I like um, Neil Ross Campbell and Alberto Mielgo and Peter Chan and Yun Ling and all these graphic people It's 100% different and unique, and I'm really enjoying the new features. Just with any large-scale project, sometimes the scope and vision are lost due to looking at the same things for too long. Yeah, well, hopefully not with this one. I s it still feels small to me. Um, it's just me working on it. I don't have a team or anything, so at least I still have like the full picture of it in my head. Um, what was your favorite thing that you've cut? Um, I had a squeegee brush that you could use, it would only be for touch screens, but you could use two fingers and like do a squeegee type of effect with the, your, your two fingers. So like one end of the, it would it'd draw a line between your two fingers, but you could continuously like drag it around. But I tried it a bit and it, it wasn't as useful as I thought it would, would be, so I got rid of it. Um, the masking system in this version has changed a few times. <sighs> the pages system has changed a few times. Everything's changed a few times. 
eraser system changed. Yeah, a lot of it, I mean, it goes through a few revisions before the final one, just like anything else, so. The nice thing is I can just test it out here with you guys and find any problems before I release it. Hopefully. All right, uh, I'm gonna call this one done for now. I really enjoyed this this style. It feels very unnatural to me. Just this being my first time trying this type of thing, but it's definitely fun. Might have to try it again some other time. Okay, let's see. Um, when developing the app, do you have to emulate analog painting? I felt there's some similarities. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, it's it was originally for planar painting, so yeah, just quick and direct kind of a painting approach. Okay, guys, thank you for joining in again. Uh, I hope uh, you enjoy this version. This is 2036 I'm using. Just uploaded it today um, The on the uh, experimental builds. And, uh, yeah, keep playing with it, and I'll see you next time. Have a good day.